What is going on, Governors? Just cool here, and today we've got a lot to talk about. I want to present to you what I think is the very best rally leading commanders for the Alliance Battlegrounds. That's right. We're going to cover who should be leading the rallies in Ark of Osiris. I'm not talking about what players, although I guess we'll cover that. I'm talking about what commanders you should be using. We're also going to cover some really crucial announcements. So more on that in a second. If you like the Bleeding Edge strategy for Ark of Osiris, like, subscribe. We're going to cover it. And we are a sponsor creator for Rise of Civilizations. So with that said, a couple of announcements before we get into what I think are the very best rallying commanders and I guess what build you should use for them. Um, two big announcements. The first is that in my kingdom, there is currently a more than... Uh... Holy cow, in, in the time that I took to go to record this, I think a car act ceremony went live? Did that just happen? Did I mi I don't think I missed it earlier. Seconds ago, there wasn't a car act ceremony. There's a car act ceremony. I know what I'm doing all night. I'm going to start streaming after this. That's happening. Anyways, More Than Gems is here, and car act ceremony is here. Is this the best day ever? Maybe it is. Another announcement. Oh, by the way, why is More Than Gems amazing? This event is so amazing because when you spend gems, which like if you spent money in this game, if you've been buying the 30-day gem supply, which is something I advocate for heavily, I used to save my gems to spend specifically during this event, and it was so good, I didn't think they were going to bring it back. This event is so good, I did not think they were going to bring it back. The value is so insane. So you basically just get insane extra value for spending your gems. And like, where should you spend them? I'm probably going to use mine to upgrade my castle, buying Books of the Covenant, because they're really slow to get otherwise. And you have to get your castle to 25 in order to upgrade a bunch of crucial things at City Hall 25. So that's my play. That's my play. And I'm so excited for Karak Ceremony. Holy moly. Dude, start. We're going to do this on Nightmare Difficulty. Oh, man. We're going to make a separate video. We're going to stream it. Separate video. OMG, that's exciting. Okay. Now, another announcement. If you're doing a jumper account, and I honestly think that jumping is the way to go, uh, there's an individual, AB to Beast. I'm going to have a link to their Discord and contact information in the description. Uh, they're doing a jumper group. They're starting in four or so days from now. You want to jump with a group to have a really awesome start in this game, and it sounds like they're going to have a lot of fun. Sounds like they're going to have a ton of fun. If I was starting all over, I would definitely do a jumper strategy. If you want to know what a jumper account is, I'll probably have a card up in the top. And uh, you can check out my guide for that. Okay, all the announcements out of the way. And oh my goodness, was all of that so exciting. I opened the event tab and a car accident is there. Let me tell you, I have looked at this tab like 50 times in the last hour. And this was not here. So that like just happened. Anyways, what commanders should you use? When you are playing Alliance Battlegrounds and you were going to rally other players, what commander should you use? What I think is interesting in the Ark of Osiris is that you're not usually rallying player cities, which means that commanders that have something that helps you against player cities are irrelevant. You're mostly rallying objectives, it would seem. So this is irrelevant. And you know what else is irrelevant? This fourth skill that's on many of the conquering commanders and rise of civilizations, troop capacity does not matter, assuming you were going to fill the rally anyways, and you probably were. So that means two of the four skills on Julius Caesar are irrelevant. So is Julius Caesar really the right commander to bring? Question mark, question mark? I think the answer is maybe not. So the thing you want to hunt for is twofold. First of all, we need to talk about what talents are available to you because that is super, super relevant because with a rally, I'm going to assume you have a mixed army. I'm going to assume you have a mixed army. And the second thing we should be thinking about is the skills. What skills are available on this commander? So we're going to take a look at all the commanders and talk about which ones might be surprisingly good. One that might be actually surprisingly good for rallying objectives is Richard I. That's right. You might not have expected it. His first skill is healing and damage reduction. The march speed's not particularly relevant, but that's fine. Next up is damage taken, reduced, and counterattack damage. That's relevant and good. Next up is infantry only, so it's got utility but limited. And next up is healing effect enhancement. Almost every skill on Richard I has some amount of relevance, and yeah, that seems really strong. Richard I might be a commander you bring. 
They might be at Commander Marine. We're going to talk about this more. Another commander that is typically thought of as a sieging commander is Julius Caesar. Only the first two skills are relevant. That's not exciting. Let's keep looking. Frederick has the same problem. First skill, relevant. Second skill, relevant. Third skill, relevant to cities, doesn't matter in Alliance Battlegrounds. Fourth skill, doesn't matter for rallying cities, or sorry, rallying um, objectives in Alliance Battlegrounds. Frederick I is actually not amazing, which is weird. Let's go to Hannibal Barca, and here's where things start to get interesting. Barca's first skill, super good, relevant in this situation. The next skill, super good, relevant if you're attacking an objective. Third skill is irrelevant. Fourth skill actually has some relevance here. The troop capacity is not terribly overwhelming, but the damage bonus is really, really good. The damage bonus is really, really good. So this is a commander that now has the leadership and attack tree, and we'll talk about why those matter in a minute, and have two and a half sort of relevant skills, which is maybe better than Caesar, Caesar and Frederick. Moving on, I mean, I guess you could talk about CPO, but like, look, if you are in one of the top tier alliances, if you are the person who's leading rallies against objectives, you should be one of the strongest players in your alliance. You could be using CPO. Um, but here's the problem with CPO. Third skill, not relevant. Fourth skill, not relevant. Again, troop capacity, I'm saying, is not relevant because theoretically you should have been able to fill the rally anyways. It didn't need to be your troops. So surprisingly relevant commanders include Boudicca. What? Boudicca? First skill, relevant. Third skill, relevant. Fourth, uh, fourth skill, relevant. Everything here is relevant to attacking a city, as weird as that is. As weird as that is. Amazingly, Joan of Arc. Super relevant stuff. Am I taking her over to Legendary? Probably not. But I'm just pointing out here that some of these commanders might be decepti deceptively good for attacking some of these objectives. Looking at Osman, Osman's first skill, super relevant. Second skill is not. But the third skill is actually quite good. And the fourth skill, oh, uh, no, that's irrelevant. I don't know. Worth looking at him. So anyways, where do things get actually super interesting? Mehmed the second. Going back to that legendary tier. First skill, good. It's strong. It does damage. If there's other players nearby, and there will be, they're going to get hit. The second skill, very good. The third skill, not relevant because it's only for player cities. But the fourth skill, rallied army capacity bonus. Hello. That seems really good. So there's two legendary commanders here that can get you more relevant skills, and that is Mehmed II and our good friend Hannibal Barca, which to me says that that might be the very best pairing. Hannibal Barca first, so that you get the defense reduction onto the target, and then Mehmed the second to get big, big damage as the follow-up. Yeah, seems really good to me, and there's a lot of synergy between these commanders, um, and you can bring a mixed army, which again, I think is really, really good. The question becomes, who should be the primary, and what should the build be for one of these commanders? I would love to show you. The thing that you should be looking at is the leadership tree with name of the king, because you're actually leading rallies against objectives. And by the way, I think close formation is really good if the rally's getting reinforced as well. And you should be getting effortless. That is what you should have. If you've got extra points, I really liked armed to the teeth and armored to the teeth. Those do a lot of really good stuff. I'll say there's a couple things that are a little disappointing about this combination of commanders in this context is that healing herbs is not going to be relevant, nor is fresh recruits. So that is what I would be doing if you're using this commander. Um, by the way, I suppose you could look at something like fight to the death, which um, is increasing your damage dealt and also increasing damage taken. If you're using them for rallies, like, so what if you take more damage? They're not going to attack your rally as individuals, and if they are, like, pff, they're going to suffer for it. They're going to get super punished attacking into one and a half million troops, especially if you're reinforcing it. So that's the core of what I would be looking at in a commander that is with the leadership and attack tree. Now, Mehmed II, if you were using him as the primary, and I think he's a good commander, if you were using him as the primary... He's got this skill tree in the leadership tree, so everything is the same in the leadership tree. But in the skill tree, you'd make your way over to rejuvenate, and I think that's insanely strong. 
I think that's insanely strong. You honestly could consider the full skill tree supported by perhaps either strategic prowess or close formation. I don't actually know which is better. I don't actually know which is better. Both, I think, are quite good. I'm inclined to believe that the name of the king build is better, but generating rage is really, really strong. And we're attacking locations, not cities. Now, there's a couple other things we should talk about here. There's a couple other things we should talk about, which is what if you could get a rally of full infantry? What if you could get a rally of full cavalry? And I know that's a hard thing to imagine or to create necessarily, but let's hypothetically say, what if you could create the perfect situation for a rally? And look, you can prepare for Alliance Battlegrounds. You can coordinate. What if you used full calves and you use Minamoto and Sao Sao? So let's assume you had full cavalry for a moment. You'd have this skill be super relevant. The damage bonus, the cavalry attack, is good. The damage to barbarians is irrelevant. Uh, Warlord is incredibly good. And the expertise skill is good. If we go to Cao Cao, you're, you are not benefiting from the march speed reduction. You're not benefiting from the march speed on the cavalry. But Rage Restored is good. And like, look at that cavalry attack. I mean, you're going to do so much damage. You could lead a full rally with all cavalry if you planned it. And it might actually be better than the mixed army. It might actually be better. It would be so much damage. It would be so much damage. It would be really nuts. That might be a route to go. Another route you could go, because you really want to have your cavalry on the open field, would be actually to use infantry. A full infantry rally. Now, infantry are normally kind of slow. Um... Right, But what you could do is you could use either Richard I or Charles Martel as the primary and use them as a combination. On Charles Martel, the first skill, relevant. The second skill is going to be hyper-relevant. And the fourth skill is going to be super-relevant. Third skill is related to the garrison. So if you brought all infantry for your rally, use Charles Martel and Richard I, is that a thing? It'd be a much more tanky rally, which is kind of weird. That's a kind of weird thing to do, right? So you could do it, though. Like it's Alliance Battleground. You can prepare. I think that would be very interesting to watch. Full infantry rally. Now, you could support the rally with cavalry. What's the downside to, to a full cavalry and a full infantry army um, in a rally capacity is that you're going to be really weak to um, the opposing troop type, right? So full cavalry is going to be weak to infantry. Full infantry is going to be weak to archers. I don't know who uses archers. I'm just kidding. People do use them, but anyways. I think that would be an interesting set of combinations. And I suppose, I mean, shoot, we're we're shooting the moon now, right? So you could do a full archer army. You could use Isongye for massive skill damage, followed up with El Cid. Am I speaking heresy? I guess the march speed on El Cid is a lot less relevant. But so is the march speed on uh, on your cavalry, right? When El Cid's army has been reduced to less than 50% strength, damage bonus of 25%. Guess what's going to happen in a rally when it's reinforced? I think the percentage of health, you know how the bar gets low really quickly? You might actually get low really quickly here and get the 25% damage bonus. I'm just throwing it out there that you can do some stuff in Alliance Battlegrounds that is really creative and edgy that you can't do other places because we're not talking about assaulting player cities now. We're talking about assaulting objectives. And that gets really interesting. Ultimately, we're trying to take advantage of having more skills that are relevant to the battle. And I'm really eager to play around with some of this stuff. Personally, I'm going to be recommending for my alphas that we go in the direction of the Hannibal Barca and Mehmed route. Many of them already have Caesar, though, in a really great place. So that probably will be Barca with Caesar. And, you know, I guess Caesar really should be the primary to elevate the damage from Barca. Rock that leadership build with Name of the King. Go all the way over to Effortless, and you're sitting in really, really pretty for rallying objectives in Ark of Osiris. My friends, I hope you found this helpful. I really enjoyed making this, and I enjoy strategizing for Ark of Osiris. We have at least a dozen other ideas for things that we've not talked about yet, and many of it I want to show to you when we actually go do Ark. So more of that coming soon. If you like Ark of Osiris, like and subscribe. 
And if you've got any thoughts about who you should be using as a rally leader, drop it in the comments. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.